of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. This winter morning begins like any other in Peyton Place. But in the hours to come, a number of dramatic events will occur. And various lives will be altered by them for better or for worse. Morning, sir. Morning, Miss McKenzie. Cold enough for you? Just about. Would you like a cup of hot coffee? Ain't got time this morning, thanks. I had to stop and help Elsie Thornton shovel out. I hear it got down to 12 over at White River last night. And it seems to me that every year the weather's getting colder. Morning, Connie. Oh, good morning, Judy. The coffee pot and the bacon and eggs are coming up. I think I'll just have a cup of coffee this morning. You know, you don't have to leave, Judy. Allison and I have loved having you here. Well, you and Allison have been very kind to me. You know, I'll never be able to thank you for it. Have you thought about what you'll do? Oh, yes, I've done some bookkeeping. I do have to find a job. Oh, you won't be going back to the mill? Oh, I can't. I mean, George thinks that Leslie's responsible for everything that happened. I just wish Betty would call again, that's all. Maybe you'll hear from her. You'll see, after she gets settled. It's just not knowing where she is. New York is so big. But if I told her she was all right, Connie. If she were sick or in trouble, you'd hear from her. And you know that. Mother, I'm stuck. See what I mean? Wouldn't you know it? Today of all days, and my zipper stuck. Hmm. You look lovely, Allison. What, with a stuck zipper? And it's brand new, too. Do you really think I look all right? Oh, you look more than all right. What does that mean, more than all right? A college girl. I think this is the day that Mother will start to cry. Not till next September. Well, don't rip it. I won't if you stop fidgeting with it. May I help? Yes. Hi, Mrs. Anderson. There. Well, hello. Hello. You're a wizard. And you're a very pretty girl, Alice. Do you really think so? You must be pretty. Your first day in college? No wonder you're excited. Well, it isn't really my first day. I'm just going to go see my advisor. Sign up for special classes. She'll still graduate with her own high school class in June. You're not leaving. Our house guest is determined to go. Must you? Yes. Yes, I must. And your wife's name? Julie. And your daughters? Your occupation, Mr. Anderson? Carlton. Do you know where you are now? Hospital. How long have you been here? children? Who am I, Mr. Anderson? Doctor. Do you know my name? I'm Dr. Kessler. You're Dr. Kessler. Who is Betty? Do you have a daughter? Is your daughter's name Betty? Is your 
daughter's name Betty. I called you over at Connie's, and she told me you'd come home. I... Won't you come in, Doctor? Yes, thank you. I, uh, I can't stay too long. I just came over to tell you that George is making some progress. Just... What is some progress, Doctor? Well, he's comfortable and quiet. And they don't know when he can come home, huh? Not yet. You can be sure he's getting the best possible medical care. so empty. Betty gone and George. What's left? There's you. Are you all right? Yes. Before you rang the bell, I, I was... I couldn't even go upstairs and unpack, Doctor. I always used to have so much to do. There was George and there was Betty. There was, there was well, my, my work with Mr. Herring, but I, I was kept so busy. Well, keeping you busy is a wonderful old remedy for, for women alone, too. Listen, there's a job that's available right now in my office. I understand you're a wonderful secretary. And that's, very, that's very kind of you, Doctor. No, no, I mean it. Now that Laura Brooks is gone, I need someone in the office. Doctor, I appreciate it, but I'm not a medical secretary. Well, Julie, I don't need a medical secretary. I need someone to help me with my filing, my billing, my appointment book. Now, look, I've got two more house calls to make, then I have to open the office at 11. You think it over and then call me, huh? I, I don't know what to say. Well, just call me on the phone and say, Dr. Rossi, you've made yourself a deal. All right? I'll think about it, Doctor. All right. Thousands. I just can't think of any at the moment. Well, be of stout heart, Miss McKenzie. Confusion too shall pass. How'd you get ahead of your class in high school? I went to summer school. Are you happy about it? This enrichment course is fairly new, you know. Letting high school students take college level work. Well, I'll, I'll still graduate with my class. You want some advice? No, please. I need all I can get. Well, entering at mid-year this way, taking college work while you're technically still in high school, sometimes you'll feel like a fish out of water. I'm beginning to feel that way already. Well, don't. You're here because you're bright. Stay that way. Mm. I'll try. Tell me something, Miss McKenzie. Yes? Oh, I've asked new students the same question for years, and sometimes, once in a blue moon, the answer surprises me. What do you want to learn in college? Just like that. Just like that. Well, I want to learn a lot of things. But I think it's not only the knowledge. It's learning what to do with it. Hold it, freshman. Your time has come. On behalf of the uh, student body of Peyton College, 
I bid thee welcome to, uh, to what? <laughs> How's it going? I, I wish I knew. I'm so fed up with pink cards and blue cards and forms. I, I love it. Let's relax a minute. First day, freshmen have been known to collapse from sheer exhaustion. <laughs> Everything's okay. That's so far. You're staring. At Alison McKenzie. You know, when I uh, first heard that you were going to be taking special courses here, I started thinking about that. Well, go ahead, ask me. All right. What were you thinking about? Well, it's a small college, right? You're big to me. I mean, you're a student, I'm a student. No matter what anybody says, we're bound to run into each other. Well, like just now. Oh, well, maybe I was kind of looking for you. Rodney. Let's get something straight. Your mother doesn't want me to see you. Well, I respect her for that. She's right. Now, let me finish, okay? Now, what's fair, what's right is one thing. What's happening, that's another. What is happening? You're here. I'm here. That's what's happening. And I'm not going to lie about it. I'm glad of you. It'd be nice to be able to. You can say it. Because you're here and I'm here. But Betty isn't here, Rhoda. Sorry, but I can't forget it. I'm supposed to meet a friend here, Sharon Purcell. Right. She says someone was coming. Sharon's in the sitting room, dear. She's back here. She's trying on a heavenly cheese, an import. I only hope she doesn't buy it. I want it myself. Uh, where exactly do I go? Oh, right back here. Just give a yell. Thank you. To your right. almost scared to walk in this place. I mean, you said to meet at Ellen's, but I didn't expect anything quite like this. <laughs> I had an idea this would be fun for you. Do you like this? Oh, Sharon, it's beautiful. Well, it's cost a fortune. Well, it's only money, sweetie. Do you want to try it on? Are you sure it's all right? Of course, live a little. Did you buy your clothes here? Most of them. I have an account. It, <laughs> I guess it's none of my business, but I'm... Well, I'm a little mixed up. You mean because we met in Mrs. Wagner's employment agency? It doesn't seem to fit in with all this. Well, that was my day to go straight, you know? No, not exactly. Well, every so often I get a severe attack of respectability. A nine-to-five job, health, salads at the automat, and curl-up nights with good books. It never lasts. What about between attacks? I give in. Give in? To the hard facts of life. I came to New York to make it big. I think we all did. I had 
had hopes. Well, hopes aren't enough. They go up like smoke in this town. I don't understand that. Well, you have to decide whether you want to live or just exist. What do you mean? I mean that you can't live it up on 75 a week. What else is there? Getting smart. Aren't you going to try that on? All right. Oh, Sharon, it's lovely. I know, sweetie, it's for you. Just making a fool of myself. Who are you? Oh, well, what's the good of dreaming? Let's pretend. Sharon, you said getting smart is the answer. It's the only answer. Dr. Rothy. Morning, Mr. Carson. I've been waiting for you. My father spent a very rough night last night. Oh, where is he? He's in the channel. I tried to get him to stay home, but he just wouldn't do it. Well, let's have a look. Hmm? Oh, I told Elliot not to bother you. He fusses worse than an old wet hand. Would you sit down for a minute? Have you been taking those pills I gave you? No. Oh, he ran out. I was going to get it refilled. You take this over to Hanley's drugstore, please. Tell Mr. Hanley we're in a hurry. I can get a film later. You need it now. Yes, of course. We'll be right back. Hey, Elliot? Now tell me about last night. Was there much chest pain? You ought to stay away from Calvin Hanley. You know who Calvin is, don't you? Don't get yourself excited about him. He's Elliot's father-in-law. Calvin Hanley, the drugstore. Elizabeth's father. She was a Hanley before she married my son. All these years, Calvin's been sure that he killed her. Now that Elliot's back, he'd better stay clear of Calvin. He's got a temper. He was a hard man. Even as a boy, he was hard. He never played, never allowed his own children to play. After Elizabeth's death and Elliot's trial, he got worse. We'd better think about you now, Eli. I'm going to put you in the hospital for observation. Oh, stick. We'll talk about it with Elliot. No, we won't talk about it. I'm going to take you down there now. keep my daughter in these cold evenings. Where she belongs. She's old enough to know when to go out. Maybe. Mr. Hanley, I need these right away. That'll be a dollar seventy-five. Thank you, Mrs. Reynolds. You're welcome, Miss. Everybody gets served in their turn. If you want an emergency, I wouldn't be here. That's right. Nothing ever changes, does it? You're older. I've had a lot of time to grow old. I grew old in one night. You been out to the cemetery? No, I haven't. I go every Sunday. 
Every Sunday the year round, I visit my daughter's grave. You suggest that I join you? If it is ease your conscience. My conscience? Now listen to me, Mr. Hanley. Don't you raise your voice to me. I'm not raising my voice. I'm stating a fact. I am here, Mr. Hanley, right here in Peyton Place. Now you and I are going to have to learn to live with that, like it or not. Bills are ready. I'm not finished. I didn't kill your daughter. Someone in this town lied, and I intend to find out who it was. Did your pills are ready. My father there with her? Allison? Betty, um, I think I ought to tell you something. Your father isn't home. Oh, thanks, Allison. I'll try to get some more quarters and call Mother. Bye. Uh, no, Betty, wait. I'm afraid this is not a fit night for man release. Betty Anderson just called. From New York? Mm. She, she didn't say where she was. She wanted to talk to her mother. Oh, not a shame. Did you tell her Julie's moved back to her own house? Mm, she said she'd try and call her there. She hung up so fast, I didn't have a chance to talk to her. I hope she does call Julie. She'll be so relieved. Wonderful, Julie. Thank you. Les, I don't think we should go out to dinner. Some way it just doesn't seem right. We went all through that an hour ago. Well, I know that. But there's nothing wrong with two people who have common concerns having dinner together in a public place. Well, if that's all it is. For now, yes. And later? That's one of the things we have to talk about, Julie. Now, come on before you change your mind. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. I'll settle for that if I thought Rod would take me back. That isn't much to settle for, not with what you've got. I have an idea. Why don't you move in here with me? Can't pay this kind of rent. Oh, don't worry about the rent. How old was he when he testified against Elliot Carson? Why? I suppose that's enough to make anyone grow up different. You never heard me quarreling with your sister. Why would I have lied? I liked you. And I never blamed you for what happened, Elliot, because I knew what my sister was like. Thank you. 